especially also talking with your dad about this is what a middle linebacker has to be in making those conversations. Oh yeah, he he definitely you know over the years he definitely talked to, told me that um, you know I'm a good I'm a good leader definitely by example, but I got to be more vocal. Um, uh, in the locker room, you know, and I feel like, you know, over the years, I've definitely got better at that as far as just even out there on the field, just trying to get the defense lined up, get guys moved around, get the calls out. And uh, so he definitely, just over the years, he's seen just my development on like as a leader and uh, being more vocal, uh, develop over time. And he's, you know, just, you know, What's up, Draft Wizard fam? It's your boy, Jay Tuck. And today I want to talk about a prospect that a lot of people has been hitting me up online about, and that's Jeremiah Trotter Jr. out of the University of Clemson linebacker. And we all know his father played for the Eagles, right? But this is a young kid, and he definitely has some upside, especially with some NFL bloodlines, because his father was a beast, right? But when you look at Jeremiah Trotter Jr., he's six foot two thirty. So a lot of people think he's slightly undersized, and I could possibly agree. Um, but we'll definitely talk about it as we dive into the film. Now, I think it's going to be extremely important for him to go out and have a great combine because I think they're kind of guessing him to be around kind of four six guy, maybe possible four seven. So if he could run well. I think that's definitely going to boost him. But if you look at what he did last year at Clemson, he had about 77 tackles, seven sacks. But I think the biggest thing that we definitely want to focus on is the missed tackle rate. So in this very first play right here, you'll see him lined up at the middle linebacker position. And he's able to come downhill and make a play. Now, this is versus my nose. So for those of you who do not know, I am a huge Seminole fan. And we were actually the national champions. You can't tell us anything else this year. Um, but this is place versus my guy, Jordan Travis. He's able to come down there and to shoot down the gap and make a play. And the one thing you'll notice when you watch Jeremiah Trotter is that he's very agile. He has smooth hips and he's very sleek. So he can move, he can bend. So he has some of those characteristics that they definitely like at the NFL level. And he's able to make a play on my QB 13 in Jordan Travis. Sleek right there. Very sleek. Now, once again, on this next play, when he's coming downhill, he's able to make things happen. Now, do I think he's an avalanche? Absolutely not. Like, I don't feel shot out of the cannon when I watch Jeremiah Trotter. But once he gets revved up, he gets to start moving, right? So you'll see on this play right here, even though he didn't make the sack, he's able to get the hit once again on Jordan Travis, and Jordan Travis is able to complete it to Keon Coleman for the first down. But like I said, once he comes downhill, he's definitely coming. He's definitely coming, and he can definitely make plays, but he doesn't feel shot out of a cannon to me. Like There's some linebackers that you watch, like as soon as the ball snap and they make their mind up, they're coming down here. There's slight hesitation, but like I said, once he's revved up and coming, He's definitely coming downhill. On the next play right here, now here is what I've noticed, and I've watched a lot of games, and if you follow my content, especially during draft season, we just don't, this is not a highlight channel, so if you come looking for the highlights and you wanted to watch the Notre Dame game, this ain't the channel for you, right? I like to kind of look at the good, the bad, the ugly, and I would say versus Florida State, even like the past two years, wink, wink, he really hasn't had his best games versus Florida State, so I want to kind of dive in and say, okay, what's really going on? But the one thing that, I do notice when it comes to Jeremiah Trotter, he does take some poor angles sometimes, and sometimes he's not able to bend his hips and make the play. But as you notice in this play right here, even though he took a kind of a poor angle, he's always in pursuit. He is a pursuit linebacker, which I definitely like. He can chase because he has some speed. He has some agility, right? But sometimes, and we'll see that in some other film clips, he'll take a poor angle, but he always runs to the ball. Like I said, I think that runs to the ball is probably something that's taught to him by his father with the NFL bloodlines. He is always going to pursue to the ball, which is something I'm definitely looking for in a linebacker. Don't give up on a play because right here, he could give up on a play, right? You want to play like, ah, you know what I'm saying? I missed out. Now nah, he's going to continue to pursue, 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 and even try to make a play. On this next play right here, like he's had like almost over 1,300 snaps as a uh, redshirt junior at the University of Clemson. So he's definitely seen a lot of football. Like I said, he's coming from football bloodlines. So he has some IQ. Now, is it extreme IQ? Is it Nick Bolton IQ? Or is it even kind of Ivan Paces? I would say no. But he's able to read and diagnose well. And you'll see that on this RPO. 
and able to make a play on Jordan Travis right here. So, you know, I don't say he's a high IQ guy, but he's very aware. He's very aware and he has a good feel for the game, especially out in space. So, like I said, he's not an extreme high IQ guy, but he definitely has some awareness and a lot of experience throughout his tenure at playing at the University of Clemson. But you'll see him kind of come downhill and being able to make that read. Because if he doesn't, right, if he comes out and chases with this tight end, I think that's Bell, right? Jordan Travis is probably taking that to the crib. So good awareness, way to get his hips low, bend down and make a play. Agile. All right, so this is, like I said, this is some of the bad. Like I said, sometimes when it comes down to his angles, he'll come downhill and just make a poor angle. Now, if you're a Cowboys fan watching this, it's probably where you're probably like, all right, tuck him out, right? But like I said, there's always going to be upside in learning opportunities for all these prospects that we watch, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that he is going to be out of the box ready. He has a lot of upside, a lot of different tools in his toolbox. But sometimes, man, he'll just come downhill and get washed out. He'll miss tackles. He won't break down his hips. And so some of those are the, the things that he's definitely going to have to clean up at the NFL level. But that's my guy, Trey Benson. It's hard to tackle Trey Benson, which we'll talk about Trey Benson here soon on this channel, which is why you have to subscribe. Boom. All right. And on the next play, he does a better job breaking down on the tackle. Like I said, getting his hips low. Like I said, when you look at him, he has a good base. Now, I think the concern with him is will he be able to anchor? And what I'd be my anchor is like if, if you know, Ezekiel Elliott or someone or Derek Henry was to meet him in the hole, like is he going to be able to dig his feet in and be able to secure the tackle? And we don't, do not know, right? Because like I said, he has a lot of missed tackles, like a 16% missed tackle rate, you know, this past season at Clemson. And, you know, so that's the one concern like i think he's balanced right he's not really great at one thing he's just good at a lot of different things if that makes sense so he's not an extreme elite pass rusher but if he comes downhill he can definitely make plays and get sacks he's not your quote-unquote pound for pound run stopping middle linebacker right but he can definitely help on the run so there's a lot of different things he's not a great coverage linebacker but he can drop in zone he can cover like i said he has a lot of the tools it's going to be very important how a team is going to be able to mold him once he gets in house. Um, so you'll see this play right here. Like I said, it's out in space and zone, but he didn't make a play on the ball. And I feel like there was an opportunity for him to at least bat the ball down. You'll see big 54 right here. And my guy, Jordan Travis, just throws a dot, you know? So, so sometimes it's just like, all right, like I said, this was a poor game from him. Like he struggled versus Florida state, but I want to see, who are you when, you know what I'm saying, you're facing some adversity? And this was just a big game, a big catch from, I think that was Keon Coleman once again, whose film session will be dropping soon, right? But like I said, he dropped in coverage a little bit. You know, I think there's like an 88% completion percentage rate when he's targeted. So like I said, he's not one of your coverage guys, but he has a good feel and good awareness, especially dropping in zone. Now, I know a lot of people was asking me like, okay, well, can we rush him off the edge? Me personally, I don't think he has the size yet or also the toolbox yet to be a, a, a edge rusher at the NFL level. Now you'll see him lined up on the edge and this is versus Graham Barton, who is a tackle slash guard who we'll definitely talk about here frequently during draft season, right? But as you see, he just gets washed about the play, you know? So I don't think he's going to be one of those guys. Like if you're a three, four kind of team that you can kind of sit him off the edge and get pressure. Like, I, I just don't think that's his game. I think he's going to be an inside linebacker. That's just going to need to grow a little bit. I think where he's going to be best is getting a gap, B gap pressure, but it's set him on the edge versus left tackles and right tackles. I just don't think he's built for that. And on this next play right here, you know, we'll see it once again. Sometimes it's that over pursue with number 54 over pursue and just those missed tackles this is my biggest red flag and you'll see that frequently on his film you know if you kind of go through the duke game go to the florida state game also north carolina i'm on i'm like five games in it's, it's still early it's still january y'all but you'll see this a lot when it comes to jeremiah trotter just over pursuit just missed opportunities and you can't have that at the next level and especially if you're a dallas cowboys fan we have seen enough of this and this one last play i'll show you again right just a missed opportunity here on Trey Benz. He's going to come downhill perfectly fine, read the slip, but just not finish his dinner. You know what I'm saying? So those are some of the things that when I watched Jeremiah Trotter, it's kind of a concern. But like I said, overall, y'all, 
he is a good prospect. He has some upside potential. I personally would like to see him get a little bit more size on him. Um, you know, does he give me the uh, Kobe Dean feel? Yeah, but I think Nicobe Dean was a little bit more athletic. He was a little bit more explosive than when I watch uh, Jeremiah Trotter, but I think he's kind of in that realm. He doesn't give me that Ivan Pace feel. He doesn't give me that Nick Bolton feel for those of you who have been following my draft content for some time. But as of right now, I think he's probably going to be a day two guy. Um, you know, there's going to be some opportunity depending on how the linebackers fall, which we'll talk about. But I think it's going to be important for him to go out there and have a good combine. But if you're looking for a day two linebacker that can definitely involve and has some upside potential, Jeremiah Trotter would definitely be that prospect for you, man. So comment, like, subscribe, follow me on all social media platforms at JTuck151. I want you guys to stay safe, stay blessed, stay encouraged, and draft season is here, y'all. Let's get it. Peace.